1957, the Sputnik was pushed into orbit and created a new environment for the planet. The planet went inside this man-made environment for the first time. And in a certain sense, that ended nature. The Greeks had invented nature by classifying various phenomena visually and with the resonating simultaneous environment of information by a Sputnik, Greek nature disappeared. When we experience or are sub submitted to the, uh, the situation of disembodiment, a discarnate, non-physical existence, we lose touch with natural law. Disembodied man, discarnate man, cannot relate to natural law. One of the peculiarities, therefore, of this discarnate condition is the kind of moral anarchy that descends upon people. The old moral codes, based upon hierarchic knowledge of nature and society, tend to be scrapped or just to fade away. We have seen a vast amount of this in our own time. I'm going to draw attention to another aspect of radio and the simultaneous world. One that has not, I think, been looked into very much, if at all. And that is in the jazz age, which was also the age of prohibition. The panic about booze probably related to the advent of radio. Why? Well, tribal people, acoustic, pe acoustic people, right hemisphere people, cannot use alcohol. I suggest, therefore, that the radio age, the prohibition age, may have had an instinctive panic about the danger of alcohol, just as the TV age has an instinctive panic about drugs. A television is a very powerful drug. It is an inner trip, a psychedelic inner trip. And it is addictive. And drugs are not new, but the panic about drugs is new. In the 1920s, booze, there was no more booze than there ever had been, but the panic was new. One of the peculiarities of television as an experience is that it immobilizes the motor muscles of the eyes. This is one of the reasons for sleepiness in the presence of TV. And uh, its soporific qualities are relate to this fact that the motor muscles do not respond to the flow. The, the, you, you are the screen in television, you are not the camera. You are the screen. The, the energy flows into you and into your eyes. And the, the energy flows so quickly in, in milliseconds that the eyes do not have any opportunity to respond mus by a muscular movement. It's quite different with film. With 24 frames a second, the eyes do have an opportunity to respond muscularly, but not with TV. And so, one of the peculiar problems of TV, and it's uh, as natural as uh, the effects of, say, radioactivity on people who don't know the properties of radioactive material. Um, one of the problems of TV, therefore, is the, in immobilizing the eye muscles, it makes reading very difficult. 
the TV child who is negligently exposed to large quantities of television uh, has trouble concentrating and moving his eye muscles. There are fortunately people who know the kinds of exercises necessary to correct this physical defect resulting from TV viewing. Uh, there are specific exercises. One of the most effective exercises against this immobilizing is the trampoline. Because the trampoline permits the eye and the head and, the, and all the muscles of the body to exercise in a variety of patterns. One, another strange sidelight on this matter is the fact that learning disabilities are 90% male and only 10% if that female. Why should television have this adverse effect mainly on males, boys? Well, the answer there is not too hard either. Uh, because girls have a series of exercises in connected to anywhere from skipping to sewing to cooking to cosmetics, a series of exercises which require rather delicate muscular adjustments. Whereas hockey sticks and baseball bats are not much help in energizing the motor muscles of the eyes. And so the boys' physical exercise life is rather unable to help him to correct the effects of television. Now, I thought that by bringing radio and TV together in this matter, it might throw a little more light from one to the other, just as these two hemispheres act reciprocally as figure and ground. When one is figure, the other is ground. When one is ground, the other is figure. And this interplay between media helps one to understand. But boys who find their IQ ratings way below the girls, find their ratings in the class uh, room uh, very adverse, naturally tend to get pretty mad because uh, it has nothing to do with intelligence. You can have 20-20 vision in each eye and still be profoundly dyslexic. Because dyslexia is not something that takes place in the eyes, it takes place in the, in the matter of convergence of the eyes in front of the page. Dyslexia is a problem of convergence and has nothing to do with vision. Violence, by the way, in that regard, is the natural response of somebody who has lost his identity. When people lose their image of themselves and their identities, they become very angry, very disturbed and very violent. The violence of this generation is, I think, prompted by loss of identity. Loss of identity is something that took place with radio. You'll find that the poets and the artists of the, of the radio age were quite aware of this. Mr. Elliot's Hollow Man is an account of loss of identity, so with the Wasteland and, and his other poetry. In the case of Finnegan's Wake and of uh, Joyce, Joyce knew very well, he called, by the way, these two things, the ineluctable modality of the visible, ineluctable modality of the audible. Uh, Finnegan's Wake is in a full recognition of the return of Western man to the right hemisphere. Finn again, back to the Finn cycle. Back to acoustic culture. Our tribal man. But this violence is everywhere in our entertainment. And I don't think that violence in entertainment should be taken as literally a consumer item, it has a hidden ground again of loss of identity.